still good morning welcome everybody uh, ja bujlam mone hocche je ami bokta ami shobhapati puro tai amar ekhon shobha jodi shonar dhorjo thake ar ki ar keu ache kina ami jani na sajari sajari ar subject to amar tobe amar mone je bishoy ta ei rokom na karon hocche ki je ami ei je ei ইয়েটা করার আগে আমি গুগলে সার্চ দিয়েছিলাম যে আর্টিকেলস পাবলিশড অন হার্ট ফেলিওর ইন এই যে জাস্ট জুন মাসে আনবিলিভেবল কোনো মানুষের পক্ষে এটা পড়ে শেষ করা সম্ভব না শুধু একটা মাসে হার্ট ফেলিওরের জন্য যতগুলো পাবলিশ পাবলিকেশন হয় মানে এত সো মাস আর্টিকেল ইট ইস টোটালি ইম্পসিবল ফর এ পারসন সো হার্ট ফেলিওর ইজ নাও এস্টাবলিশড অ্যাজ এ সাস এ কাইন্ড অফ দ্য ইম্পর্টেন্ট সাবজেক্ট এবং এর কারণ হতে পারে এই জন্যই যে আমাদের এখানে বেশ কয়েকজন আমি দেখতে পাচ্ছি যে আমাদের হার্ট ফিলোর এক্সপার্ট আছে এবং আমি আই এম ফিলিং ভেরি মাচ প্রাউড টু বি হিয়ার বিকজ ডক্টর প্রফেসর হারিসুল হক মিশকাত আহমেদ চৌধুরী আমাদের বগুড়া থেকে এসছে ডক্টর শহীদুল হক উনি আমি জানি যে আমার সঙ্গে মাঝে মধ্যে আলাপও হয় হার্ট ফেলের রুগীগুলো নিয়ে তারপরে আমাদের বাডেমে রেজাউল করি ভাই দীপল অধিকারী অনেকেই আছেন যাদের হচ্ছে যে আসলে আমরা সবাই মিলে হার্ট ফেলিওর ইয়ে করি কিন্তু নতুন কিছু বলার জন্য আমি যেটা দেখলাম যে আসলে ইট ইস টোটাল ইম্পসিবল যে হোয়াট ইজ থিঙ্কিং দ্য সায়েন্টিস্ট অ্যাট হোয়াট ইজ দ্য চ্যালেঞ্জ কেন এতগুলো পাবলিকেশান আসলে টু চ্যালেঞ্জেস আর ফেসিং দ্য সায়েন্সেস টু ডেজ টু ডিল দ্য প্যাশেন্টস অফ দ্য হার্ট ফেলিওর পার্টিকুলারলি দ্য টু চ্যালেঞ্জেস দ্যাট ইজ দ্য রিস্ক অফ দ্য সাডেন কার্ডিয়াক ডেথ অ্যান্ড দ্য কোয়ালিটি অফ দ্য লাইফ these are the two things of a heart failure patients and these are the regions there are two mass publications and the articles the sciences uh, sciences dealing with these two things how to reduce the sudden cardiac death and how to improve the quality of life in heart failure patient as because you know the heart failure patient repeated hospitalization limited activities physical burden social burden economic burden lots of the things psychological burden input some bad impression on the heart failure patient and these are the reason the heart failure patients are suffering a lot the family suffers a lot so these are the two reasons the science is dealing with the heart failure patients how to do to reduce the sudden cardiac death and the quality of the life and the reason is that the one of the most important pathology in heart failure patient is the dyssynchrony you know it is a big subject talked much subject about the dyssynchrony what is the dyssynchrony what is the impact but finally it is one of the most important factor why the heart failure patients are refractory at a time does not respond to the medical treatment and this is one of the main mechanism for refractoriness of the heart failure patient that is the dyssynchrony and dyssynchrony does not happen to all the patients as because some of the other factors as because the dyssynchrony again produces the reduced ejection fraction and the reduced ejection fraction is responsible for the sudden cardiac death and these factors are again related with the lv scar it is not related to the ischemic or non ischemic whatever may be the etiology but at the long term if the patient survives there will be fibrosis in the scar and finally the dilatation so dyssynchrony reduced ejection fraction lv scar and the dilatation are the main pathological hallmarks of a failed heart that gives the pathological features in the heart failure patient and ultimately all these factors in a coordinated or discoordinated fashion two things they produce one is the persistently high afterload of a heart failure patient persistently high the afterload the it is already a failed heart and this failed heart always faces the persistently high afterload and this is again produces the increases the internal stress internal stress produces the increased lv pressure and ultimately thinning of the lv wall reduction of the lv mass and alteration of the geometry all these factors are interrelated no single factor is responsible for the heart failure patient's morbidity all these factors are interrelated and one of the again factor dr asan have already told there is the lv dilatation secondary mitral regurgitation again puts again some burden to the field heart so it is the persistently high after load and the mitral valve dilatation that is mitral real dilatation that produces the uh, mitral regurgitation two are the main important factors that gives some abnormal 
property to the heart so that the heart progressively, progressively, progressively goes towards the failure. So these are the reserves that is to improve the quality of life and to reduce the sudden cardiac death. These are the challenges the sciences are facing and this is the region. There are too much papers on this subject. And to deal this subject, always drugs is the first. We always teach our students written in the text that is a drug first. That is the heart failure patient. Even I will discuss the, about the device therapy. But in the guidelines, it is stated no device therapy is recommended without prior, that is, guideline directed medical treatment. So, drug is the first. But very, very important to see since 1970s, over the past 50 years, only four drugs now at available at our hand that can reduce the mortality of the patients. There are too many drugs that is used in the heart failure patient. That is the, some of the drugs are the background drug. These are particularly related to the symptomatic treatment. There is no input to the mortality. That is the mortality benefit. Only four drugs, that is spironolactone, ARNI, beta blocker, and HGLT2 inhibitors. Only these four drugs, those are called the fantastic four. They have proved their efficacy that they can reduce the mortality, also can improve the quality. The other drugs, that is the diuretics, digoxin, what do you say? This can only give the symptomatic benefit to the patient, no input to the mortality benefit. So this is not easy. That is, a, despite the several studies, innovations, determination, over the last 50 years, the sciences has produced only four drugs. And the four drugs can give the mortality benefit not to mass. You see, the mortality benefit of the AC inhibitor is 16%, beta blocker is 34%, that is the spinal electron 30 percent and the receptor blocker 17 percent. None of the drug has crossed the 50 percent. And although the benefits are additive, not like that, 16 plus 34 plus 30 plus 17, not like that. There is some, some, some additive effects of these drugs. If we can able to add the drugs, there will be some addition of the benefits, not that it is a simple uh, addition. So there will be some addition. So despite all these productions, all these innovations, even with this fantastic four, still 50% of the patient die in five years from the heart failure. So much so disease, and this is the reason everybody knows, we tell that is heart failure is more dangerous than the cancer. That is still the, even with this fantastic four, there are challenges, that is the 50% of the patient die in, that is the five years. And, and this is the reason why the drugs fail. When there is the limited role of the drug, there comes the role of the devices. So there are some devices, you see, the aim of the objectives of the devices is also to deal the sudden cardiac death and the quality of life. And these are the types of devices you can see in the slides. The devices, the, the, the devices can be classified for the acute heart failure as well as the chronic heart failure. There are some electrical devices like the ICD, CRT, his bundle pacing, you know. And there are some mechanical devices, that is the Impella, ECMO, and LVAT and some valvular disease that is the mitral valve. These are all the devices. All the devices are FDA approved, are being used, but not all the patients get access to these kinds of the devices. Not all the patients gives the, their criteria to have these kinds of the devices, and there is a limited role. Two of these devices, among all the devices, only two of the devices are being used worldwide, and the patients are getting access to the devices. And ESC guideline, 2022 has summarized all the patients of heart failure just on the basis of the two factors, that is the ejection fraction and the ECG, only, only these two things. And the other guideline also included the NOIC class, but the ESC guideline also considered that is the uh, ejection fraction, and they have set the cut marks of the ejection fraction at the 35. They have not included in the study that is the more than 35. That is, we will discuss only the patient who has got the ejection fraction less than 35, and we will divide the patients depending on the QRS duration. Less than 130, straight away the patient is selected for the ICD, and more than 130, 
selected for the CRT D, and in between 130, we don't know what to do. That depends on the patient's quality. So, ESC guideline clearly states there are devices, but the devices has got also some limited role. They cannot satisfy all these patients. You can classify this patient depending on these ECG groups, and you will get only two kinds of the patient, less than 130 ICD, more than 130 CRTD. But what to do? Those will not fit for this patient. So this is the, again, these are the challenges for the devices therapy. And this is one of the example you see. This is the ICD that is considered as the emergency room in the cyst. And since, again, you please look at, since 1990 till 2015, over the 25 years, there has been 12 big trials, 12 big trials. 40,000 patients are enrolled. And summary of the result is that from all these 12 trials, that is ICD has proved 40% reduction of the sudden cardiac death. This is the ability of the ICD. This has proved. And there is no further need of the study to prove the efficacy of the ICD. ICD has, has been already proved that it has got the ability to reduce the sudden cardiac death as much as 44%. And in summary, for the reduction of the sudden cardiac death, either by device or by the drugs, we have got only two things, the Fantastic Four or IC or the CRTD, nothing more. Fantastic Four or the CRTD, and the other drugs, in these 12 trials, amiodarone, flicanide, disopyramide, these three drugs have been trialed, but none of the drugs proved their efficacy to reduce the uh, sudden cardiac death, even they have increased, I will show later on. So we have got only the Fantastic Four and the ICD or the CRTD for the reduction of the sudden cardiac death. And this is the ICD trials. You please look at the trial. This is the region I am showing this trial, you see. The, none of the trials after the 2000, that is by 2000, it has been proved ICD has got this quality. That is, they can reduce the sudden cardiac death. And all these trials, 1997, 2000, 2000, 1990, that is all the trials has been finished by 2000. Since 2000 till date, there has been other studies, but no need. All the guidelines since then till to date, ESC or the AHA guidelines are based on this trial. That is the AV trial, CID trial, case trial, or the, for the primary prevention, the medi trial, mass trial. These are the trials. These have founded their foundations for the development of the guidelines. So there is no need that the ICD has got this quality. This is proved. The ICD can, but ICD cannot. We have got the feelings that ICD has the quality. The, one, the patient who has got the ICD, he will never die. No. You please look. That is, ICD has got also the limited capability. It can reduce sudden cardiac death, not the mortality, not all cause mortality, only the arrhythmic death, 44%. So this is the ability of the uh, ICD. And these are the trials. And the trials are finished by 2000. And again, despite these trials, beautifully written guidelines, not only in Bangladesh, it is worldwide. Physicians believe ICD cannot do all the things. Still they are using, we are using the antiarrhythmic drugs. And you please look at the tables. Lignocaine, mexilatin, flicanide, beta blocker, emetron, sotalol, calcium center blockers. These are the drugs in different ways have been used in the previous trials and considered the mortality or the risk of the sudden cardiac death. And please see. The lignocaine has the neutral effect, makes it a neutral effect. Flicanide has been stopped in a study. Rather, it increased the sudden cardiac death. Beta blocker, this is one of the drugs, can reduce both the mortality and the sudden cardiac death. But amiodarone, in co that is, the, uh, that is uh, again, what we cannot believe, that is the amiodarone does not have the mortality benefit. It can only reduce the arrhythmic death. Not the total mortality. You please try to understand. Only the arrhythmic, not the total mortality. Sotalol is a neutral effect, and the calcium channel broker is also neutral effect. So the drugs only 
very limited drug, beta blocker and amino acid are very big. None of the drugs either neutral or detrimental. So this is the pieces, uh, that is the facts of the drugs. But despite all these facts, still the use of the antiarrhythmic drugs in a susceptible patient even more than the devices. These are being used. But if at all we have to select the drugs, this is the guideline we can select on the basis of the sum of the side effects. These are the drugs. So sudden cardiac death, this is the summary. That is the summary of the selection criteria of the ICD for the heart failure patient, you see. That is all the criteria. When the ejection fraction is less than 30, how much important the ejection fraction is? There is no need of other criteria. The single most only ejection fraction is sufficient. Nothing to see. What is the class of the patient? Why did the patient has got the Ariston or nothing to see? The guideline states less than ejection fraction, class one criteria, we have to put the ICD. We are not doing, but this is written in the guideline. But if the ejection fraction is 30, less than 35 percent, that is more, 5 percent more, then we have to consider that that is a class one, that is anyways a class one is not selected. And if the ejection factor if you increase further 5 percent, that is 40 percent, then you need to prove the non-sustainability. So this is the simple criteria for selection of the patient, either less than 30 or 35 or 40, depending upon the ejection fraction criteria, we can select the patient for the ICD. And for selection of the criteria, that is the ICD, we have to think, this is very much important, not always, but at least at this stage, uh, honorable chairperson, that is the, for the ICD selection, we must consider the contraindication. We have to see the indication as well as the contraindication. We are actually interested about the patient's VT, cardiac arrest, but we have to see the, also the contraindication. That is the post MI less than 40 percent. That is the non-ischemic cardiomyopathy less than 30. That is the less than three months, and NYSA class four insistent VT or the reversible ischemia. These are the, that is the contraindication that is before selecting the patient. We have to see whether there is any factors or not like this. Then these are the patients are not the, uh, selected for the patient. And within 40 days post time, what to do? This is the burning questions for the, since that is the, from the beginning. What to do within the 40 days? These are the two studies. There are very limited, uh, no, no big trials. Only two small scale studies, that is the dynamic studies and the iris investigation studies. The dynamic studies finished in 2004, and the iris studies finished in 2013. They have selected the patient after MI within 40 days, who has got the arrhythmia, and proved there is no arrhythmic benefit, that is the reduction of the mortality from the arrhythmia, rather increase of the mortality from total mortality. So this is the region that is the post my patient within 40 days are not selected for the uh, ICD patient. And who has got the 35 AUFC, that is the EST guideline selected, that is the 35. So what to do the patient who has got the more than 35 percent? Answer is unknown. We don't know what to do and what will the benefit. That is guideline has not selected this patient. They have selected only the patient who has got the, so the guideline, there is no study, so I have no answer. So again, the uh, QRS duration, honorable sale person, I am the only speaker. If the time is short, if you just let me know, I'll stop. And for the another groups of the patient, I have already said that is the uh, ejection patient less than 30, 30, 35% and QRS duration is more than 130. I have already told ejection patient less than 35, QRS duration less than 130. And now, Ejection fraction less than 35, QRS duration 130 or more. These are the groups of the patient we can select. That is for the CRT D or CRT P. And the main objective of these kinds of the device, resynchronization. Resynchronization. And this resynchronization ultimately gives rise to the MR reduction reverse remodeling, and this benefit is achieved only when there will be such kind of the ECG. You see, this patient had got late bundle branch block, but after resynchronization, like this implantation of the CRTD or CRTP, 
this is the ECG that, that looks like n almost normal, but this is not always possible. This is not easy. Every person will not show like this. There will be some limitation. And this is the region they have selected this criteria. And why not less than 130? There are now too many studies. There are two, st three studies, you see. The retin trial, eco-CRT trial, and laser, that is the laser rat trial. These three small-scale studies, they have considered the patients less than 130, but is expected to less than 35%, and none of the studies proved benefit from the CRT. And this is the region. The guidelines, particularly the ESC guideline, has excluded this criteria. That is nothing to do. These groups of the patient, although the patient's quality life is disturbed. And from this above slide, this clumsy side you see, what we follow the ACC or the ESC guideline, there are some marginal differences for the selection criteria. <coughs> class one, class one, class two B, I will not discuss this criteria. But what is seen, that is in all these criteria, the class one criteria is same. Class one criteria is same, ESC or ACC. Class one criteria is same. But there will be some difference in the class 2A and 2B criteria. I will not discuss this. The class one criteria in both the guidelines is same. What is that? That is the LVB morphology, QRS duration equal to or more than 150. This is consistently right. And these groups of the patient, almost sure, they will get some benefits from the CRT therapy. But not all the patient is because as much as 30 percent of the patient may show that is they may they, they may uh, can uh, do not show their response to the CRT therapy who are those these are some extension criteria we always most of the times overlook this criteria and give some that is the patient's luck is bad the eco is not good you are not taking medicine regularly but not these we have got some role. The physician also got some role for the proper selection of the patient. And these are the some roles. I have got some idea. Honorable Chairperson, Professor Meshka Dhamma Sodhari, he has sent many, uh, good number of the patients. He is uh, one of the person whom I respect. He has got this capability. He sees this extended criteria for showing this is not only the guidelines told. It is the injection fraction of the QR's duration. But we have to see as a clinician for selecting the patient and telling the patient that is the discussing with the patient will be benefit or not to discuss with the families. There are some limitations. All the patients not equally benefited. Some 50 percent, some 60 percent, some 90 percent. And some of the patients may show the super responder. Not all the patients. Who are those? And these are the, some criteria. This is very much important. That is the global scar burden. This is very much important. That can be uh, some, we can predictions from the ECD, also from the ESCO. And also the scar location. It is the lateral of the scar. The inferior scar is we cannot overlook. But if the lateral of the scar, as because the CS lead will be on the lateral wall. If the scar is on the lateral wall, the QRS duration will not be reduced. The patient will not be buried. so. It is the global scar, scar burden, scar location, mitral regurgitation, all the factors in addition to the QRS duration and LV function determines the whole patient will determine or not. And right bundle branch block, this is not uncommon. Right bundle branch block is also very common. But all the right bundle branches are not excluded. For the careful analysis of the right bundle branch block, it is told that RBB masking LBB, some of the right bundle branch block, some additional criteria, in addition to the classic criteria, that gives this patient has got some other conduction defects. What, what do you want to mean? It is, is it the only right bundle branch block or some of the other conduction defects that can produce the dyssynchrony? That is the main factor. Yes, that is slur in the R in one or AVL, if right bundle branch block, but there is slurring in the ROF in the one or AVL. That determines this patient has got some conduction defects in the late bundle also. And left axis deviation or atypical right bundle branch block. So not all the right bundle branch blocks in general are not excluded. The right bundle branch block giving some unmasking features of the late bundle branch block are the criteria that may show the benefit. So if we classify all the patients less than 35, 
on the basis of QRS duration. These are the QRS duration, this clump, this slide show, published here. And summary of this slide is that QRS duration more than 120, LBB 34%, RBB 22%, and QRS duration less than 120, sinus rhythm 44%. So we cannot satisfy all the patient considering the ECG and the ECO. There will be some of the patient. Those are not suitable candidate neither for the ICD nor for the CRTD. What to do? Over the last two decades, starting from 2000 till to date, there has been shifting of another interest of the device therapy from the classic CRTT or CRTP toward the his bundle pacing. That is pacing of the his bundle. This is one of the uh, challenging part for dealing the patients with the heart failure nowadays. And the his bundle pacing is not for all. Again, this is for some group of the patient. That is the patient who will give some abnormal heart failure from the already implanted pacemaker, that is pacemaker induced cardiomyopathy, or CRT non-responder, or some other criteria that exclude the patient for having the CRT or ICD. So these are the groups of the patient for whom the his bundle pacing is now a dis, is being advised. And this is the 2018 ACCA guidelines, class 2A or class 2B indication for the implantation of the his bundle pacing. This is already in, included in the guideline. This is also ESC guideline, class 1 even with the level of evidence C and class 2A indication for the implantation of the his bundle pacing when the patient will fulfill this criteria. So there are some good effects from beneficial effects of the his bundle pacing and this is the region the his bundle pacing is now included in the guidelines. And finally, non-LVB ECG, LVB ECG not responding to the device therapy, or CRT responder now are the classic candidates for the his bundle pacing. And this is the his bundle pacing. This is one of my patient, the single chamber VVI pacemaker, the lazy implanted at the his bundle area, and this is, you can see, the B triple ECG. What is the objective? Just giving rise, that is the, some kind, kinds of the ECG that looks like almost the physiological ECG. These are the two ECGs, the above ECG, the RBB, the lower ECG, now normalized to the normal. This is not my slide. This is downloaded from the ESC guideline. Again, this is another ECG. Here you can see the selective versus the non-selective, that is the his bundle pacing, not only limited to the his bundle area, can be done also to the downwards, that is the late bundle branch area. And this is again the ECG, that is depending on the site of the his bundle pacing, either the his bundle area or the lower area, that is, it can be classified as the selective or the non-selective his bundle pacing. And again, the his bundle pacing has been included for the heart failure management. And this is the region. The his bundle pacing has been compared with the biventricular pacing and giving some the almost parallel or equal benefit, not inferior to the classic uh, biventricular pacing, that is his bundle pacing not inferior to the classic CRTD or CRTP pacing. And this is again one of our patients. Here we have done the late bundle branch pacing. That is the QRS is, you can compare, you can memorize the previous ECG. The QRS duration is little more wider. This is the late bundle branch pacing. But this is easier, the learning curve is less here. So we can do that, we can treat, but this is better than the other kinds of the his bundle pacing. And another group of the patient who has got the combined atrioventricular plug and the heart failure. And this is the subgroups of the patient where the despite the ejection fraction 35 to 60, that is 36 to 60, there is recommendation for the implantation of the CRTP or CRTD in case of the heart failure with AV block. These are the only groups of the patient. All the patients, is there is the less than 35, but here you can increase the selection criteria in between 35 up to 50 percent of the is infection. More than 50 percent, it is the physician's choice 
whether he will do the his bundle pacing or the conventional right bundle bundle pacing. And this is also again challenge for the heart failure patient with the atrial fibrillation. There are some of the trials, small trials, what to do with the atrial fibrillation patient. These, these are the four trials. All the trials has recommended. There is uh, two trials has showed without the avino ablation, the heart failure with the uh, atrial fibrillation patient may be benefited. Companion trial says no. PAPE trial says yes. If the patient gets benefit, we have to do the epineural junction. So this is another, that is the classic heart failure patient. There are two, two subgroups. One is heart failure with the AV block, and another is heart failure with the ejection fraction. And what to do with these groups of the patient? There is heart failure with the AV block, or the heart failure with the, is a, that is the atrial fibrillation. The another recommendation is that hot CRT, hot CRT. His optimized CRT, that is his bundle optimized CRT, that is CRT will be done optimizing the his bundle area, combination of the, that is the one kind of the hybrid treatment you see. That is his bundle pacing also done and the CRT is also done. This is called the hot CRT and inclusion criteria is failed his bundle pacing, even when the his bundle pacing cannot show the consistent benefit, his pacing or the failed CRT or non responder These are the groups of the patient, those can be selected again for the uh, hot CRT. And this is the one of the example of the hot, hot CRT. The right ventricular read, lead, instead of putting to the his bundle area, that is the instead of putting to the septal area or the RV wall, has been put to the his bundle area. This is called the hot CRT. That is putting of the RV lead to the his bundle area or the lead bundle branch area. This is called the hot CRT. Nowadays, Hot CRT, one of the important device treatment, device kind of the treatment, that is when the heart failure can be dealt. And this is one of the results of the heart failure studies. And here you can see heart failure study has shown consistently when a better result for the heart failure patient. And finally, again, this slide shows that these are the devices. And one of the devices I have not talked, that is the LVAT. The upcoming lecture will be on this, that is the LVAT. This is one of the, again, this is talk. And this is thanks. And dear participants and the honorable distinguished participants from this thanks, you can see the word thanks, capital and the small combination. There is a message. Despite all the things, innovation of the drugs and devices, there is more number of the patient, huge number of the patient, of the heart failure patient, they are beyond our reach. They are not getting the treatment, not getting the good result. Even having the CRT or ICD, 30% of the patients are not getting their optimum result. So science is struggling with the heart failure patient, how to improve the quality of the life and reduce the sudden cardiac death. And this is the reason. Huge number of the patients, every day being published and uploaded in the Google. Thank you very much for your patience hearing.